I'm not sure if this thing is awesome or a total piece of shit. So here we are in the beautiful snowy mountains of Idaho on a cold winter day. And today I am reviewing the Hex Peak three person teepee tent from Lux Outdoor Gear. So why would you ever even consider one of these things? Well, let me tell you how I came across this teepee tent. When looking for a good winter shelter, there's a lot of options. I've seen hammock setups, I've seen mountaineering tents, and all of them come with a pretty big price point. The first thing I'll say about this teepee tent is it's very well priced for a shelter. You can get into just the hex peak part of this for less than 250 bucks. And when you're comparing that to say the MSR Access 2, a standard winter tent, this thing is a much cheaper option as a four season setup. Now, it does come with options that can raise the price dramatically. For example, the stove option, which will cost you an extra 300 bucks. And if you wanna add an inner tent, which I highly recommend, it's gonna be another 50. Still reasonably priced compared to other mountaineering tents, and you get that cool stove feature on top of it. I'll get to whether you want that stove feature in a second. But before that, I wanna mention how I found this thing. I work with a lot of Idaho raft guides, a lot of Idaho hunting guides, real mountain men and women that come out here and do some of the gnarliest stuff. Actually, one of the guides that recommended this to me told me this story about how he was out here with this thing, shot a black bear with a pistol, and then started cooking the black bear on the stove. That is a real story. You cannot make that up. That is Idaho for you. So once I started researching it and I found the price, that is why I pulled the trigger and took this thing for a ride. Now, a couple of other benefits that I like is one, it is light. It's gonna be lighter than the traditional mountaineering tent that you can purchase from REI because it's really basic. It doesn't have a floor. It has the one tent pole setup. And you would think that that one tent pole setup means it's flimsy. It's not. The first night I tested this, I was dealing with strong winds and I've dealt with strong winds before. This thing handles like a champ. I think that has to do with the actual shape of it. It just bends and curves with the wind. So it works really well in the four season conditions. That teepee shape too allows snow and rain to just snuff off of it. So it is truly a four season tent. Now again, we're talking if you just take this base model out without the stove, once you add a stove, once you add the inner tent, your weight goes up. Now you don't need either of those things. A ground sheet and a proper sleeping setup is more than enough to keep you comfy out here. And if you wanna know how to get your winter sleeping setup all set up, I have a video on that, link in the description below and a card up here if you wanna check it out. Now if you get the inner tent, you're still gonna be at much less weight than the traditional mountaineering tent. And I do like the inner tent feature. I mean, I like the concept of the inner tent feature. It's nice to have that like half the teepee shelter in it. It just makes you feel less exposed. I think it kind of helps with, you know, keeping your heat relatively in one spot. It does feel like it's warmer when you sleep within that thing. The inner tent is a little janky though, and I don't want to judge it too much because I'm sure it's user error, but it kind of sloughs off the sides. I know there's supposed to be room in between the actual teepee and the tent so that moisture doesn't build up. I don't know, it's kind of like a bug net is laying on top of me when I sleep. I'm sure I can make that more taunt with some guy lines or some, I don't know, just better setup. And that's the first knock I have on this thing. It definitely takes a little more skill, a little more practice to use this, I feel. You can't just pop it up and boom, it's all perfect, it fits perfect. Learning how to get a good pitch, learning to just set up that inner tent, to make sure your ground sheet doesn't move around. All those kind of like elements are, are a little bit tricky instead of when you have the traditional mountaineering tent and you just pop it open and boom, it's ready to work. And I think that might be why those Idaho outfitters and guides really like this thing. Like if you're a real experienced mountaineer, you probably want more control in your shelter. You wanna be able to do things like pitch this thing without any poles. You can hang this thing from a tree and not use any poles and have a shelter. But if you're just the casual person that's like, hey, I just, I don't know much. I'm just trying to sleep in the snow. I think that you might struggle a little bit more with this thing. Knock number two is, and this goes again to me not 
probably knowing how to work it real well, but God, there is a lot of condensation that builds up in this thing. It is just always wet. Like when it goes back into your bag in the morning, it's gonna be wet. It's, it's like a mini rainforest in there at night. Yeah, it's warm, but holy cow. I feel like clouds form in there sometimes. Now the stove. The stove feature is a big thing about this. I mean, it's, it just looks so cool. You see videos with a stove in your TP tent. First of all, if you're going backpacking with this thing, I would not take the stove. Like the stove is light, but it's heavy. It's time consuming. I mean, it's just a pain in the ass. There's no way to say it. It's tough to set up. There's a lot more risk involved with the stove. You can definitely cut yourself trying to get that chimney put together. Make sure you have gloves. Make sure you have a good seal so that it doesn't leak any smoke. I think when I think of a stove, I think of something heavy, something sturdy. But really, because it's so lightweight, it's kind of this like flimsy thing that sits in there. The first night I used it, I used it in the wind. The wind kicked up, blew the chimney off, and all of a sudden there was smoke leaking in the teepee. Now, again, a little bit of user error. Better outdoorsman would have guy lined the chimney so that it didn't move, but I didn't. I guess that was just one more thing to do out of the thousand things I needed to do with that stove. For it to really produce a good amount of heat, you gotta really keep feeding it. So you'll have to be constantly collecting wood, which will be wet in the winter time. It's just a really time consuming, challenging process to just make that stove work. There's no back vent on the stove. And every time you open the door, the smoke comes out at you, filling the teepee with smoke again. All of your clothing, your sleeping bag, it's gonna reek of smoke for the rest of time. It's just, there's a lot of smoke in the teepee. It's a, it's a smoky teepee. And I know it takes a skill, but like keeping it going all night is just like not realistic in my mind. If you're car camping or something like that, if you're doing something real easy, if you're not taking it very far, maybe the stove would be a nice option. I'll give it that. It's, I wouldn't recommend trying to really keep it going like at night when you're sleeping or anything like that. Really trust in your sleep system. You don't need a stove to stay warm. Let me just say that to you. But when I woke up this morning, I was sitting in bed, I was drinking some coffee. I thought, you know, might be nice to have a stove going right now, a little fire, just a nice little morning wake up fire. And I think that's the benefit of the stove. If you're just in a nice, easy, controlled environment, a place where you could take it in, take it out, um, buy a car or something like that, I think it might be nice. And you can have a nice fire in the evening, let it go out as you sleep, wake back up, have a nice fire in the morning, just like you would your traditional fire pit when you're out here. Don't forget that the stove burns super hot when you have it going. And just in case something happens, you gotta be able to move it. So make sure you buy some sort of gloves or something that allows you to touch basically fire, a very hot surface so that you can move that. Make sure you have some sort of work glove for when you're rolling the chimney. It's super sharp, you don't wanna cut yourself. The chimney is difficult to roll with just one person the first time. So roll it once before you take it out with you with another person. Once you've rolled it out, once you've used it, the metal will remember. It'll have that memory and it'll just fold into the chimney super easily. Check out this video to see how you set up your sleep system for the winter time. More gear reviews with this playlist. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.